Okay, welcome back. Uh, we're going to do our second video today, and what we're going to be doing is doing the entity framework. We're going to generate our model based off an existing database. That database we talked about in video one, so if you haven't watched that one, check it out. I'll put a link to it on the uh, comments. But what we're going to do here is just quickly generate the um, framework for the entity framework to go with it to do our database operations. So what we've done is I've added to the solution and instructions to get the source code are also in the comments but I've added instructions to get the solution and we're going to go right here. We're going to right click and we're going to go to manage NuGet packages. We're going to make sure the entity framework is installed. NuGet.org, make sure online NuGet.org is selected and the entity framework is installed on mine. Yours will probably have an install button because it's not showing and just hit install and okay 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 and, and there it'll be. And then you'll have references to the entity framework and you'll see packages.config will contain entity framework 602. Okay so how do we do it? Well there's not much to it really. Uh, we're gonna right click on the uh, C-sharp project. We're gonna go to add a new item we're going to select data, ADO entity data model. We're going to call it status report model. We're going to generate it from a database. I'm going to say a new connection just because I want to make sure I got the right one because over here on our Server Explorer, it says it's the local one. Ah, it's actually save a little time here. Slash v11.0. Local db slash v11.0. There it is. And the one we're looking for is status report. And so I gotta find it here. Stats report, stats report, EF, DB folder. There it is. Test my connection. It succeeds. I'm gonna say OK. And then we're gonna go in here and it says um, save entity connection strings in this as entities. And we could even be a little bit more descriptive. We could go in here and say status entities. And we're gonna go next. Pluralize or singularize, that's just going to do for our tables, and we're going to include all of the tables uh, that we care about. We don't care about system diagrams, we don't care about the refactor log. There's no store procedures other than the system diagram stuff, so we don't care about that. Um, there's nothing that we really care about except for two tables. So we're going to go ahead and the model namespace is model, We that's fine. We'll finish it up. And it says running this spin plate, that's good old Microsoft warnings. Say OK. Say OK. It's running for the second table. Now we can see our schema. And we always need to verify that. Um, if you come down in here, you'll notice a few things that's done to our project. Is in the server explorer on the left pane. We now have, and I'm going to get rid of this one because I don't like to confuse myself. Here is the actual connection to the one that we're connected to with the entities. That's our tables, etc. We can see that there is a relationship within the uh, object. It's person to person and it's ID of uh, the manager to the ID of the person if you remember and then there's a one to many from the person to the report entries which is what we expect. And then if we come in here to the status report model we'll see it created our context it's got our designer which is what we expect and everything else is there. If we right click on it we can see that we can show the code maps we can show differences we can do anything we want to do but we are good to go because we're viewing the model and that's what we really care about here. Uh, we don't have store procedures so we don't have any complex types. We don't have any of that stuff yet. So uh, 
we're good to go there. Now it said that it was going to add to our config file a connection string. Let's, let's see if it did. There's our connection string, status entities, and there is how to get to our database. Now you have to pay attention to this because this connection string will have to duplicate if we were doing WCF or if we were doing Windows Forms or whatever we were doing. We're going to have to duplicate this connection string in later projects. Uh, otherwise it's not going to know what to do with itself. And then here the initial catalog is obviously going to have to be changed too, right? When we go to production, this initial catalog will change to uh, whatever the database file really is. And this server, the data source, could change to a fully qualified SQL server connection string, uh, which it will for SQL Express uh, when we actually go in how to deploy it. So hopefully this helps. This gives us a fully functioning uh, entity framework model and we should be good to go for the next project which will be we'll get some tests put together and make sure it's working and then we'll go from there to our Windows Forms UI. So hopefully this helped. It was a little bit educational and as always thanks for stopping by.